come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Hey, do us a favor. Wherever you found us, give us a like, a star rating, a review. All of that stuff helps us get found by more people like you, and we want to reach more people like you because you know quality entertainment. You're a discriminating listener. That's what we like about you, and we want to be found by other people like you and become the fastest growing podcast not even a movie review podcast, just the fastest growing podcast in the galaxy. Uh, also, a little hey, bit of he- housekeeping. And now we've got amazing Freak Show merch. Michaela, why don't you tell the fine folks at home about where they can get some of our stuff? That's right. We have Freak Show merch. If you go to tpublic.com slash user slash Sariant Freak Show, or we have a link to it on our all our social media. We've got our logo t-shirts. We've got 400th episode t-shirts. We've got copyright 2020, whatever year, Sarah and Freak Show shirts. Got Love Rhombus shirts. You can get mugs, pillows. You can get onesies for your babies. You can get whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Please get onesies for your babies. <laughs> Please. Get a Love Rhombus onesie. <laughs> Wait, so who's some, I'm talking to you. I know we have listeners who've got families and little ones and everything. Get them. There yeah. you go. Send and us there's pictures. Something, I was going to say yeah, I was going to say, as as you start getting your merch, send us pictures of you with your merch. We want to oh, see please, it. Please do. I want to see all those. you want to see on a shirt, write in and tell us, and we'll make it happen eventually. Oh, we yeah. got we got some suggestions. If you stick with us through until Igor's mailbag uh, later on, we'll, we'll tell you some of those. Uh, but you're probably wondering who you're listening to. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly. Kayla. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by John. I have two questions. What movie did we watch tonight? And are you trying to out shocking dark yourself? <laughs> um, here at the freak show, sometimes we go off the, the beaten path to find things in the jungle of movies that are out there. Mm. I like this. Oh, I like where you're going. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, so you He's know, trying to put a nice spin on it. Yeah. I am indeed. Sometimes mm-hmm. those things are in a bog somewhere in the swamp. Sure. We got to go in there and get them and hang with them for about an hour and a half and then try and make our way back out. So tonight's movie uh, was from 1989 and it was called Offerings. Directed by Christopher Reynolds. Do we know him from anything else? Nope. <laughs> you, do that? you do not he did one other movie called what was it lethal somewhere i was about to say lethal injection that's not right lethal just... justice in 1991 lethal <laughs> justice that lethal sounds like justice. a steven seagal movie it does, it does it really doesn't does. it just sounds like an action movie from the 80s lethal like, justice like i can see the cover with him holding his fists up you know <laughs> i mean that that is i'm yeah. i wouldn't be surprised we should probably google lethal justice i'm sure it's the title of another movie well, I, I did Google it. Jean Claude so Van Damme. Did you? I saw the the cover art and I looked up. I'm like, well, is anybody in this that we would know? But the answer is no. No. I think uh, what's his name? Christopher Reynolds. Christopher Reynolds is. Um, he does have uh, a couple credits to his name, which you would recognize. I think he was like a PA on Poltergeist. <laughs> yeah, but. Let's let's be clear here. He was a production associate. Oh, not a not even. Not <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. The guy's not probably even. listening to this. How many people <laughs> review <laughs> offerings? That's right, Christopher. <laughs> Tonight is your night, <laughs> sir. We're gonna not go even in an deep. Assistant <laughs> associate. He was uh. associated with that production. Hey, that's more than we've done, right? I mean, uh, there well, you not go. me. I'll, I I can't claim that. I've done more than that. I've done more than this On guy. On guys, you know, Colin. I Colin. I don't know what a production associate does because so I'm going to go on a limb and say I can't. I can't agree with you on that because I don't even know what that role is. Okay, well, that's he's true. made he's made two feature films that got distribution in some kind of way. This one was put out by an outfit called Arista Films, which you think like what were they related to the record label? No. Um, this is- let's just get it clear right now. 
we may say things tonight. None of it's to related to anything you think it could be related to. <laughs> this is all contained in one little box. There's no connection to any outside world, kind of. But it's just this. This is Sean saying he didn't do any research on the movie. I, this is Sean saying I did all the re- I did tons of research, Colin. And you know what? There, there was no info to se- find. There are two sentences written. <laughs> two sentences written on this movie, and that's it. Oh yeah. What if there's I told no you? Stars, there's no director. There is. Uh, there's uh, two Blu-rays out. One of them has a commentary by a podcast group. Did you look? Did you look up to see if anyone was on social media or anything? Uh no. <laughs> Yeah, are we going to have another Larry Block situation? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Fuck Larry. No, I appreciate this movie. Fuck Larry Block. All right, well, I think I have uh, for oh, later. Oh, t-shirt, Michaela. Fuck Larry <laughs> Block. Is it oh, I will send him one. <laughs> Larry, Larry, I know we've had our differences in the past, but what's your address? <laughs> I want to send you a present. All right, so Offerings um, is a slasher movie from that the great decade of the slasher movie, the 1980s, the most American uh, horror movie genre, the slasher sure. movie, because we're trying to figure, because we've done a lot of slasher movies on this show, and we're going to do some more. Uh, I think we discovered there are two British sl- slasher movies. We know Slaughter High. And Don't uh, Open Till Christmas. Uh, which I think were both made by like the same guy or the same crew, right? Same producer right. made both of those. I think so, yeah. Right? So we're looking for like slasher films from outside of it. But I think like it's an American genre of horror film, uh, you know, that kind of spun off of the Italian giallo and is inspired by Alfred Hitchcock, right? For Psycho or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But um, this is a really late entry, like really, really. Yeah, late. this is this is like, you know, showing up to class and the bell rings. Like this is extremely late. But it doesn't. It does not look eighty nine though. What does it look like? It looks way older than eighty nine. Seventy two. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Be, no, because you can tell by the looks lighting. Like the lighting in this is very eighties, and the fashion yes. is very eighties. You got the crop tops and the midriff, which I appreciated, but uh, that's very eighty in the hair. Um, yes. But yeah, 89 is like way after the slasher uh, boom kind of ended. And well, I mean, it was still it was ended theatrically, but was still kind of going uh, on home video. This movie, I assume, Sean, never saw the light of a projector bulb. Uh, It. I believe it did. Um, I don't know where I read it. I'm pretty sure it did. Again, it's like the ones we've brought before where it's very limited as far as it was uh, uh, showcased in theaters. But again, unless you know something I don't, there's no information <laughs> on this movie. <laughs> it looked like it was a direct-to-video, but shot on 35 millimeter, because, yeah. I mean, this was the thing, I guess, in the 80s that we have to establish for you kids who are listening. Now everybody can make a movie because you've all got uh, uh, DSLR cameras and can go out in your backyard. Uh, yeah, movie. I got a 4K camera in my pocket right now. Yep, but back then you actually had to know something about how to light and expose on 35 millimeter film, and that kind of was the bar for entry. And so Christopher... Reynolds Reynolds met that bar. Damn it. He was able to, yeah, right. He was able to film and photograph an actual 35 millimeter feature film, which he hoped to get sold somewhere in Hollywood. Uh, Yes. This movie is called offerings. Uh, Did Mm -hmm. you look at the poster? Yeah. It makes it feel like a Christmas movie, doesn't it? Yeah. It's an awesome poster. Describe it for the, uh, the, the, the mental theater of the viewer at home or listener at home. Go for it, Michaela. It's like hands holding like a Christmas present almost and, and like presents bloody. And it says like, do you remember him? Because he'll dismember you. Is the oh, I think it's rem- remember him before he dismembers you, which is not bad. That's not That's bad. That's a decent tagline. To be I've honest. heard worse. Right. So we're 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 set up here to expect that there's going to be some type of birthday party or gift giving or something Gifts like that. Of some sort. Yes. In this movie. Uh, that is all a complete lie. What does the title have to do with um, the film itself? Well, technically, the killer is presenting offerings to the uh, main girl in the movie. Okay. Presents to her. That would be Gretchen. That is the offerings, yes. Gretchen is the pretty blonde with the midriff. She is played by an actress whose name escapes me. But Sean, I'm sure, looked her up. 
she's got like three names. Hold on. Is she right also here. in Lethal Enforcers, Lethal Justice, Lethal? What was the other one you said, Michaela? She was in uh, all of those. What? Uh, uh, fuck. She was right here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Loretta Lee Bowman. Okay. So not a professional, I guess. She was was not bitten by the bug enough to pursue her dreams to Hollywood. The movie was shot in uh, Oklahoma City, I think, Oklahoma. So we're, we're I mean, this is what I kind of like about these movies. When you go into the bog, the swamp that Sean was describing, you end yeah. up finding movies that are these kind of regional films that like, you know, hey, this is what life was like in Oklahoma in uh, 1989 as they were infatuated uh with halloween and uh and said hey we're gonna make uh we're gonna make halloween is that a fair assessment (laughs) (laughs) it's funny that we talk about 89 being very late for um an entry into the slasher genre but it's extremely late to be ripping off halloween so blatantly isn't it i know we all rip off Halloween in some ways but this feels really late to be like ah we're just gonna copy halloween well, mm-hmm. how many Halloween movies were out at this point? Four or five? Uh, five? Five was released in 89. Uh, so yeah. depending yeah. on when they shot this, at least four had probably been out in 88. Because uh, that yeah. came out in August, I want to say, of 88. Um, I mean, I have seen a lot of movies. I got to tell you, I've seen a lot of movies. And uh, critics are often quick to um, disparage slasher movies as being carbon copies of halloween and then you watch them and you're like okay i get what you're saying but like they are each different in their own way right i mean i have never really seen at least until tonight a carbon copy of halloween (laughs) (laughs) a carbon copy i think we need new carbon paper and whatever is doing the copy in here because there's some there's some uh uh marks that didn't make it over i'm surprised that this movie didn't get sued to be honest with you i mean right like he got away with it. What's the guy's name who did the music? It was like David Rydell. No, what was it? David Rydell or something like that. Um, <laughs> From Rydell High. Uh... This guy. The, I mean, <laughs> he uses the cues from Halloween. I mean, the opening uh, moment is uh, just a slow push in on uh, fire. Right. It's like, yes. a, so you're like, Ooh, it's going to be, a, it's going to be like a Christmas movie or something. And you're hearing something that sounds like the Halloween theme orchestrated upside down on a keyboard. But a then bit, yeah. beyond that, he actually gets into the, and he does that like a lot. And you're like, what the fuck? What is happening yeah. here? <laughs> this is, this is more egregious than Harry Manfredini. Just sticking the Friday the 13th soundtrack onto other movies. Yeah. Yeah, way worse. Or even way, um, way worse. Because I like it when uh, Richard Band Russell Russell D. Allen Russell D. Allen. Okay, we've got your name, Mister. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you go on our other wall. <laughs> <laughs> We're wall. keeping an eye on you, sir. Yeah, I think the it's used in the trailer. So if you do, <laughs> if you do look this movie up in the trailer, you will hear some of this music. Um, the, it's funny when it starts going faster. Like it's still copying it, but it's. He adds like an extra note or it's one note off. And every time I heard it, like I had a twitch. I'm like, eh, it's so close. It's so close. Eh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, toward Ugh. at the end, when the Michael Myers character is stalking uh, Gretchen through the house, I mean, it it is doing that layered thing. He's got the, instead of the uh, doom, doom, doom. It's like the reverse of that <laughs> right? uh, yep. you know do, 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 do. and then there'd be like one note off and i'm like what the fuck like somebody has to get sued sued yeah. i mean come on i mean it's very very close to plagiarism I th- yeah but i i think it was just like this is a small movie in oklahoma fuck them we'll give them more publicity yeah to them. yeah I mean, I like I was saying, I do appreciate when like Richard Band, who's been accused of plagiarism for doing scores that sound like, you know, Psycho and Reanimator, for instance, or whatever. But, you know, you get that. You take that as like homage. This is it an homage or just a straight. I mean, just a straight rip off of the Halloween score. Right. It could only be more of a rip off if he took the actual score from Halloween and just layered it under this, which he we're very close to him doing well we uh as i said we love slasher movies on this show we've done quite a few of them but there is uh no one who loves slasher movies more than holly 
Holly, what's your favorite? She can quote line and verse. What's your favorite slasher movie? What's my favorite slasher movie? Um, Ooh, tough questions. I, I Co- Colin, you're supposed to submit questions in, in yeah. writing before the show. I was like, that's that's a hard question, man. How, how dare you put us on the spot? Because it's well, like I instantly think like, yeah, I was like I instantly think like, well, I got to go with a classic. I'm like, I don't know, the classics my favorite. I don't know, Colin. That's a hard question. Okay, I'm sorry that was unfair. Screen two. Give you a little bit of time to. Th- There's only one right answer, and it's Intruder. <laughs> I see that was on my mind, Michaela. <laughs> that was on, on my, my mind, mind too, as watching this because I was like, "Man, did I give Intruder like too? Was I too hard on Intruder? Because yes, now I've seen were. offerings. You um, were too hard on Intruder. Intruder is yeah. a hidden gem. Go back and listen to our episode on it. Intruder now, has awesome which, gore. It does. Um. Uh. The link there, Intruder and this movie offerings were both available on the uh, Slasher Classics collection. <laughs> this is a classic on that red Blu-ray Slasher Classics collection, um, which is uh, uh, which gives a is the Blu-ray that gives a commentary to the movie from the podcast. The really? other one by Kino Lorber is just the movie. Oh, Kino Lorber put this out and probably looks very nice. We watched apparently a dub off of a VHS, Whoa. probably circa 1989, uh, courtesy of the Midnight Pulp app, where we had to suffer through uh, oh commercial God. breaks every 10 minutes. And so now I know way too much about Anytime Fitness and uh, Retro Crush anime and yeah, uh, was- Humera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, I Sean. Was- I-, ads. I was going to say, <laughs> like. Hey- Except for me, who didn't have ads, and I finished twenty minutes before all of you. <laughs> yeah, I switched halfway through to something to some other version of the uh, streaming the movie, and I had no yeah. ads. Thank God. Oof. <laughs> it was rough. But I mean, and that's I the know. Thing about I was the- almost going to say, let's give a uh, plug to how the only way we could watch this movie, but uh, let's not. Well, how come? Uh, well, it is available on Blu-ray, so somebody did dig it up. Yeah. I was thinking, like, you know, I was sitting there watching. I'm like, one day somebody's going to put out a Blu-ray, like Arrow will put it out, and then there'll be all these think pieces about how this is an undiscovered, you know, classic from the '80s. Um, I'll, I'll send you the link to that bloody, disgusting article later. Get the fuck! Oh, I'm it, not. Okay. I'm sure it exists. Bloody, yeah. disgusting! Like they. I, I just. I read it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> That's the only thing they write anymore is like, you know, you should revisit this articles. That's their whole business now. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind. Like, we all passed it over. Whole business, but I don't mind. <laughs> we all passed it over when it was new because it was trash. But now, damn it, you've seen everything else. And you now need to see. Yeah, it's on Blu-ray. And right. You you've seen everything diving. else. And you're like, hey, is that a swamp over there? Yeah. So that's where that's where you are, listener, when you're listening to our show. We are those people who've seen all the everything. We've seen everything else. We saw Blood Rage last year, which was one of the greatest uh, discoveries, I think, of the late slasher genre. uh, One of the greatest. Go check out. And we watched Intruder. Seen what? Blood Rage. Blood Rage. Not yet. Thanksgiving is coming up, though. You can watch it (laughs) for Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving slasher (laughs) movie. Um. So, okay, so this movie um, shot in Oklahoma in yes. probably... You can tell by the accents. Can we talk about the know? accents for a minute? Holy okay. shit. It sounded more just like everyone had a speech impediment than an accent. I'm oh, like, I Jesus. couldn't peg it, and then I was just like, "This is, are they in the South? What's going on? It's, it was it's, strange. It was it's, weird. It is, but to me, it makes the movie more interesting because I'm like strained to be like, what... How did they say that? What are they saying? I couldn't understand anything anyone was saying in this movie. And it wasn't just because of the accent. It was also the sound mixing and the quality. But like, and some of the delivery was really strange. Mm -hmm. Like when the one character was like, can I see your geography notes? The way she said notes sounded like nets. And I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? Which Which led to the only good line in this movie, which was, chicks only want me for my notes. That was that, my favorite line in the whole movie. <laughs> See, was, I like these stupid friggin' things funny. always break. That was my favorite. That was a good one, too. And that is basically a hefty commercial where they pick up the bags <laughs> and they're like, oh, they always break. But I love I love the use of friggin' in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> right when it's not dubbed in, where it's just like, yeah, oh, you mother friggin'. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like, it's a slasher movie. Just say fuck. 
Well, yeah. but see, maybe this is a this again. This could be a regional thing in Oklahoma. Maybe they're a lot more polite. Who knows? Later on. Uh, uh, you fo- find folks from Oklahoma. We we appreciate you listening to this show. We, we don't mean any disrespect. I'm just kind of curious because uh, we're we're not from Oklahoma, and uh, the, uh, the just, ground. I mean, I mean a little the ground disrespect. squirrel. Is that like? Uh, would we call that a gopher? I was curious because the uh, two of the characters at one point are going to get up in the morning and go varmint hunt. Thing, right they have to they have to they can't have sex with their girlfriends because and they can't drink too much at the party because they they got to go home and wake up so they can go varmint hunting the next party. morning uh yeah. we would go hunting party. for deer or something like that i don't know uh and, and they're gonna go hunting these ground squirrels i'm like what the fuck is a ground this is uh, i i would need to find this out you need yeah, to write in and tell only, us only on the ground or i'm curious right I'm going with gopher. I think we call him a gopher. Maybe. You know, they're listening to us going, we, they, we can't understand your accents. You guys got too many hard R's. <laughs> too many hard yeah. R's. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Give me the setup to this movie. What, uh, what, what are we, what are we talking about here? What's the inciting incident that a slasher okay. movie has to have that this one's got? Stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> we have a, <laughs> there's an incident earlier on in the movie. A child is either uh, uh, is maimed by a group of other children, and then okay. years later he comes back, breaks out of a mental institution to get his revenge. John, this <laughs> sounds like two movies you brought recently, and it sounds like fifty others we haven't. It's, it's right. This is time, Sean. But this is a <laughs> pattern with you specifically, Sean. Now you can't completely put blame me for this one. I mean, I did bring in everything, obviously, but I had not seen this movie before. I'm but the, but right the plot front. summary says that. I never didn't read the plot. I know so I, I saw you, nothing about this about before this I watched movie, it then? tonight. Uh, my friend <laughs> sent me. He's he texted me one day. He's like, "Hey, have you seen Offerings? Because you guys need to watch it on your show." <laughs> and I watched the trailer, and I'm just like, "Holy shit, we got to watch this show." What friends do you have, Sean? <laughs> he, cool, awesome uh, friends. This, this friend said, "I want you to bring it because I want the rest of the people on your show to hate you." <laughs> <laughs> and to yell at you for bringing <laughs> that's his reason for suggesting stuff for me well you ch- sean you chose your faith then man he told you <laughs> that was going to happen and you still went with it anyways so yeah i mean we that's only both cruel. watched the trailer so uh but but the I basic premise is the same as slaughter high and valentine yep yep well then where's tourist trap and, and prom night on your list sean they have to be coming soon because they have the same kind of uh setup we did so. tourist trap Oh, uh, it's not tourist trap. Uh, terror can- train. Terror train. Sorry, uh, terror train. Oh yeah. Um, train. So I've okay. not seen terror train. But uh, it's you, right I up your you alley. Did, I thought you guys did <laughs> terror train a few years ago. Mm, tourist trap, not terror train, with Jamie Lee Curtis and David yeah, I Copperfield. Know, I you guys already did it. Nope, not yet. Nope. Oh, Holly's putting Uh-oh. it on the list right now. <laughs> uh, my, uh, Holly, uh, what, what are you marking <laughs> on that sheet? Stop it. <laughs> So, okay, so these, uh, we got, we have our, uh, our, uh, mental simpleton character, John Riley. Ridley? Rat, Radley. Radley. Boo Radley. Boo Rat, right, 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 from, uh, uh, the. <laughs> Just, that makes me hate this even more. <laughs> I was going to say. Break. Okay, so, so John Radley is a kid, um, who the other kids make fun of. They take him out to, uh, they go play. Well, well they, he's they, friends they, with they, Gretchen, kind of, right? Gretchen's yes. the little girl who comes over to the house and plays with them. Um, yes. So they go out to play, and the other kids come around and they go play by this well. And- well, they make fun of him and they sort of like challenge him, kind of. It's like, make him do the well. And then he's like, screw you, I'll do it. I'm, I'm brave. And so he, they all drive their bikes out to the well. Um, I remember the simple old days where the biggest challenge was just walk around a very tiny well and not fall in. Remember those days? Yeah. yeah. I can't say I did that as a kid, honestly. <laughs> no, no, never did that, no. Not familiar yeah. with that one. <laughs> I spent at least five years of my childhood in wells. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So this could just, have been your story, Sean. Huh? Just me, you though. You identify okay. with this movie. That's yes, why you exactly. want to bring it. I saw the well, and I was like, damn it. I have to bring that. I'm anticipating a positive review <laughs> later from Sean. So, like, were, you, were you overshadowed overshadowed by baby Jessica, and that's why no one heard of it? <laughs> it, really, it was the same time, really. And that's about the time I quit my well diving. Sure. Yeah. Kids, if you don't know who baby Jessica is, ask your grandparents. <laughs> 
Um, so well, what the fuck? I remember. What do you? What, it's yeah, like, so do I. Yeah. Okay. You're so that movie. It's a joke, Colin. It's a joke. <laughs> um, it's comedy, Colin. <laughs> so the uh, so here's what I didn't get, and this is where I was kind of like, okay, did I completely miss something? The movie jumps to 10 years later and we're introduced to there's like a sanitarium and there's this big guy on a gurney. We don't get to see his face. We see his eyes in close up and it looks like there's some kind of disfigurement there because I don't know maybe there was a fire in the well or uh, maybe he hit the sides on the way down. <laughs> he said it was dry. It was that was going to be my question. Like, was he was it a, an acid well? Is that why he looked that way? Mm. <laughs> yes. The right. Batman villains well. <laughs> I, I think this would have been better had he fallen down and then you just see <laughs> flames. <laughs> that would have been great. Be like, what the hell? I Is it a portal to hell? Automatic recommend if that thing bursts into flames. Yeah. <laughs> For that little extra added oomph. Well, okay, so but we're introduced to this guy, and there's a doctor and a nurse who, of course, give us the backstory, and they say something to the effect of I don't know if they even said who he was. We're just supposed to make the connection that this is the kid who fell in the well. Now, the kid fell in the well. I assume the and kid's dead. And then, right. like, there's a relative, maybe, or some other crazy person who's going to seek revenge. But it's, apparently the, this the, is him. Yeah. A, and so after they got him out of the well, he then went back and cannibalized his mother. Yeah. You're with yep. me on this, right? This actually yep. did happen, or am I uh, not? It is, yeah. Holly's it's, shaking it's her head. I have no it's, idea what happened, Colin. It's, I have no idea. He's in the well. We cut to 10 years later, and they're like, yeah, he was chewing on his mom. And we're That's like, it. okay, I didn't see that. Is this the same? Nope. It's, it's like uh, there's a little narrative uh, uh, story working that's not happening here. They're just like, ah, fuck it. We got to get to the Michael Myers shit. We want to do a Michael Myers movie. So... He escapes. He murders his nurse by uh, plunging a, uh, a, a syringe into her brain after she's dead, drawing it back so he can pull a little bit of her brain matter up into it, which is like crucial. That's crucial. It's yeah. crucial. I um, mean, I liked it, but I wish they had done more with it. I wish he'd like pulled it out and t took it in with him. Well, yeah, it didn't really make sense. No. Yeah, like it would have been better if he'd like pulled it out and then as he was leaving the the mental hospital like there's a guard by the gate and he sprays it in the guard's eyes and then he gets out now that would have been cool well this guy when he gets out i mean uh i think they much like the original halloween they try not to show you his face uh he's always shot from behind or over the shoulder so he's heavy breathing he's always watching somebody do stuff i mean this is i mean when we said a halloween clone Folks, we mean it. This movie rips off everything that it can out of the Halloween movies from staging and everything. Um, so it's a big shocker when we actually see his face at the end. Of course, we don't know who the fuck he is, so that really has, it doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, bearing on the movie at all. Right. Um, so then we're introduced to Gretchen. Gretchen's now grown up. It's 10 years later. She's become a young woman. Her parents are going out of town for the week. Two weeks. Two and weeks. so she's going to have parties, we assume, uh, for two weeks straight. The boys are coming over and her friends are coming over like, yeah, we're going to we're going to hang out and party. This is a classic horror movie slasher movie setup. Right. And what a party it is. Does a party ever happen? Uh, it's a it's a it's a gathering of two couples. There's no yeah. party. There's two couples that order pizza. That's right. So and and the guys have to go home early because they're varmint hunting the next morning there right. is uh some kind of uh, uh uh um um foreshadowing of evil to come because uh the sheriff finds out by the lagoon right dead ducks right i mean this is uh significant there's murdered ducks <laughs> This is a big tragedy in this town. Never, never have murdered been more significant. Well, who is the guy he was talking to? Who, it was the sheriff and this other guy who shows up later. It's, was he the doctor? It's Loomis, isn't it? Was he? This is I the guy's doctor. The yeah, the, that's the. I mean, there's only like six characters in this movie. You've Got to keep the budget low. So yeah, that's the Loomis guy. Okay, I missed that because I was trying to figure out who the fuck this guy was. Well, me too. The guy with the mustache. We're saying, yeah, yeah, the Loomis type. It's just like. Yeah, it's because uh, they didn't really show him a lot in that scene. Like, this is the same guy, right? 
I was like, where's the mustache? So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. Yeah. It, what I, what I liked about this scene is that this sheriff is a crack, uh, investigator. Uh, he's like, you know, look, we got, we got dead ducks, doc, come here. He pulls out a fold out map, which, you know, in the eighties, you had everywhere you went because you didn't have GPS you had to have a fold out map. pulls that thing out. And he's like, look, sanitarium is here. Lagoon is here. 40 miles away, yeah, 40 so miles. It's on a direct line to the he, town. He, he's literally got one other dot. <laughs> yep. Like that's it. <laughs> hey, look, this is where we are. So and then he like drops the mic. Clear. So clarify, um, because that was, that was the scene where we see him in the classroom, right? Oh With shit. The lecture on violence. Yeah, yeah that's so right. That's, uh, that's our intro. So, was was he his doctor? Okay, you got I, he's, me. He's a doctor. He's not. Is he or is he a teacher? Like, I was like, where did this guy come or a, from? Or a, or a teacher? What is his who, significance? Is he his doctor and he's just like guest lecturing somewhere? Like what? I don't understand. No, I think he's um, uh, a just a teacher, but he knows of John Radley. That's what I got right. from it. It's a because it's in the town, I believe. I believe everybody knows about John. Everyone Rattler. knows about this weird kid that fell in a well and had to go to a mental hospital. Which yeah, you would so. assume mean would mean criminal charges against the kids who pushed him down the well. But you know, I think he got <laughs> out of the well. I think he crawled out of the well and then wait, went home and ate his mom, and that's how they found. So him. nobody knows that the kids pushed him down the well. That's what you're saying. That's, so. That's what I'm guessing. He's like, revenge. I have to get revenge. That's all that motivates him, right? He's like, I'm going to kill every single one of these motherfuckers. First of all, I'm going to eat my mom. And then they caught him. So now he's been on ice basically for 10 years waiting for that moment. I, I, just wish they had, I just wish they hadn't glossed over the whole he ate his mom so quickly because I didn't even pick that up until you guys said it just now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He ate his mom. Like, I didn't even yeah. pick up on that because it goes by so fast. He's a cannibal. This is a cannibal movie. Cannibal slasher movie. Just not he eats ducks, too. That's true. Because they know true. that. You know how they know that, Michaela? Because the sheriff, he's had training. His training tells him that, look at the bite marks on that duck. That's a human. A that, man. That's right. Those are human teeth. <laughs> Ate the, it's it's a, just like, <laughs> I would have been like, what? <laughs> how can you tell? <laughs> the doctor's like, well, an animal did it. He's like, no, no, look at this. Human did this. Those are human teeth. Human marks. teeth. Yeah. I mean, if he had pulled a human tooth out of the duck, sure. I'll go with that. Okay. So, so basically then this is going to be, the movie's going to settle in night will fall. Right. And we're going to be at the party house where the party will happen because we meet several different characters who are all going to the party, I guess. Are you um, emphasizing party? In this no, you can't, well, stop it. You keep saying party. It's not, it's a little get together. It's a small it's a, gathering. It's, it's a small like, gathering it's of two the couples. Same of people as when we do our podcast. It's not a party. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's a gathering that would be allowed during Corona, so it's not a real gathering. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. It's legal. This is a. We're going to call this a legal gathering from now on, <laughs> instead of a party. And by party, we mean basically there's two couples. So at least one of the couples makes out while the other couple watches a scary movie on TV. Yeah. And eat pizza. With questionable sausage. That's right. Because, well, we have to establish this. Right? Because Next t-shirt. <laughs> the questionable sausage. Write it down, just, just, just questionable sausage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or, uh, I'm, or I'm Takes on a different meaning if a dude's wearing it, though. <laughs> I will wear a questionable <laughs> sausage shirt. <laughs> no problem. So... Well, okay, but the the killer does like show up at the house because um, I don't know if I'm skipping around in this. I got to tell you, with the ad breaks, the way I experienced it, I did not right? uh, really experience I'll, this movie. I'll as, let you as, know. Uh, we'll let you know if you go off. I'm okay. Sure. So the, between the four of us, we got it. Okay. Well, we Gretchen it. has a friend who uh, she leaves and is um, attacked in her car, much like Nancy Loomis was attacked Linda. in the original Halloween. And her name is Linda. Right. She gets her neck broke in her car because Duder's in the back seat. Right. And we're like, okay. And I was like, oh, because they're friends. And these are the same friends who threw the kid down the well. 
Okay, yes. I, I'm with you. Like that's why he's killing these people because I'm like, what is his point here? What's he hammering home? But then, and this is the thing that makes this movie different than every other slasher movie. He leaves a piece of that person at Gretchen's door. She doesn't see the first one because it's a finger, and her dog picks the the finger up and walks away with it. She would have yep. seen it. But later, an ear shows up somewhere in the... Where'd the ear show up? The nose was in the, the newspaper. In the newspaper. Oh, no, that was the nose. Yeah. Uh, just on the front porch? Right. Because because the dog took the finger? Yeah. And, and I was <clears throat> joking when I said that this happens over the course of a night. It happens over the course of, like, three or four days. Uh, talk about breaking your suspense. It's like... Uh, the, the a murder and then bright morning birds chirping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the sheriff coming over and like, are you sure, Gretchen, that you don't have anybody who's playing a joke on you? I mean, this does look like a real human ear and there's tons of blood all over the place. But are you sure somebody's not messing around with you? A boyfriend, maybe Tom, that David. That a great audition. You are cast as the sheriff. I could do it in our next movie. I want, to, I want to say, wait, I want to bring up one thing, uh, uh, the finger that the dog takes. And so the dog takes away and all that's left is a tiny little thing of blood. Have you guys ever come across blood before and then just immediately stuck your hand in it? Is that something you guys do? Well, because you got to make sure it's not cranberry <laughs> sauce. <laughs> How do you tell my feeling? Well, you taste it. Like, hmm. I don't know that I've ever randomly just come across blood. <laughs> <laughs> no, is this happening? To, is this happening to me more than, more than everybody else? Sean, what shit? What are you doing that you're coming across like pools of blood all over um, the place? <laughs> so the next scene in the movie, after the finger, there's an ear. Yeah, I don't remember whose ear that was. Uh, maybe the pizza guy, because a pizza guy apparently shows up. Do we see the pizza guy get killed? I don't no. recall. You know, it doesn't matter. But then they eat a pizza that's <laughs> oh, covered with the McKinney questionable sausage, uh, which, of course, is some kind of human body part that uh, right. old John they, is turned into they sausage. Make sure there was extra cheese and there was sausage on both pizzas. And they're like, we didn't order sausage. It was fun. It was cooked. Right. Yeah. So he took, where did he cook it? Yeah. He's, Where, where's this scene? Where's this scene of him cooking the sausage fingers? He's he's in an alley with a lighter going. Well, I mean, it up and, now John is a little bit of, I mean, he's a conscientious killer, right? I mean, he's very, he's not like completely uh, soulless, right? He, he does like, he doesn't want to leave a mess. He, at some Unless point, it's on purpose. Who is the guy? Didn't he accost a guy in a like a an auto shop or something? Who was the? There was a guy that he came up on, and uh, he clocked him on the back of the head. This is hilarious because the guy like turns around. You know, we see the shadow on the wall. It's oh, John. this is uh, the boyfriend. That was it. Uh, Linda's boyfriend. Okay, Linda, who dies real quick. Her boyfriend is this guy. I forgot his name. Is it Mike or? Okay, so he, he turns around and stares at his attacker, who all we see is he raises like a tire iron and bashes him with. Next thing we know, this guy wakes up strapped down to a table. He's been tied down. He's like, oh, man, David, is that you? Are you fucking around, David? What are we doing here, David? Why are you? And then they're like, John shows up. He's like, who are you? Why are you putting paper all over the place? It's like, well, because he doesn't want to make a mess. I mean, you know, right? He doesn't want to get blood all over. And then he takes out a power drill. He's like, I'm going to. Well, know. what does he take out first, Colin? Wasn't it the power drill? Oh, the chainsaw. He takes out a chainsaw. What happened to the chainsaw? Yeah, you're right. I don't even remember this. He couldn't start it. Couldn't start the chainsaw. So then he gets no the power guys. drill. And then the power drill dies somehow, even though it's plugged in or whatever. And he's like hitting the thing. And I'm like, you know what makes Michael Myers menacing? So he doesn't have a problem with his killing implements. So is this a comedy or, or are we missing things? Something. Is this movie, is this supposed to be farcical? Is that a funny scene? Were you howling with laughter, rolling on the floor? Peals of laughter. Mm. Like, Man, God damn it. This is the most, it's like airplane level humor. I, I feel parody. like there's times it tries to be tongue in cheek, like at the end when they're like, oh, everyone in horror movies makes such stupid choices or whatever. 
you know. Yeah, she, she does mention that, yeah. <clears throat> I, think, so I uh, think it has moments of that. There's always that moment where you have to have in the self-aware horror movie that the characters make a critique on horror movies, which basically tells you, the audience, that, like, okay, we're aware of this cliche which is for some reason a character will wander off by themselves and allow themselves to get uh killed we're like as an audience member i'd never do this so we're going to say the character's aware of it the scene before they go and do it themselves so it's like we've cleared our conscience <laughs> right with the <laughs> yeah. audience it's like okay you're right we know this is what happens our characters are smart they know they're in a horror movie and then they're going to go and do it in the very next scene Mm-hmm. I I, I want to I want someone to trick us into going to watch a horror movie like full ads and everything and then I want the first person to die and then everyone's just like yeah I'm gonna leave town I'll, I'll see you guys later and then just everyone leaves and nobody else gets killed don't say that the guy from happy death day will write that I mean, <laughs> I mean if <laughs> I'd be like if they did that and that movie was like five minutes long bravo Copyright like, 2020 Bravo. Saturday Night Freak Show. Just, let's put go. that in right there. We came up with it. You heard it here first, folks. Somebody yeah, rips us off. Anybody does this in theaters, uh, it is, we're suing him. That's right. So uh, people start dying. Um, well, uh, the, you said the, the uh, drill uh, conks out. So how does this guy die? Long pause no. because I can't remember. I don't I remember. There's probably a no, commercial right hammer. there. Oh, uh, he's his head's in a vice. Oh yeah, his head's in a vice. Oh yeah, and so and so he hits, keeps hitting the vice to tighten it up, oh. and eventually this dude's head explodes. That's right. We oh, don't yeah. actually see, but see, you don't this. see that. This no, is all done in shadow. But right. I did appreciate that in the shadow, you did get to see like you know, however they were doing this with the model or whatever, the dummy, they were moving its chest like it was trying to struggle to get out. You could just see the shadow of this on a right. wall, right? And head you between see a vice in the head, and you could see that, and in the head, you could see like its brain slowly moving out, or like the the head opening up before it exploded and shit. It's like one of those pumpkins you put the rubber bands around and shit. But I was disappointed. I didn't think they landed this effect. I didn't think they landed many of the effects. I didn't think they landed this because, like, all that hits the wall is basically a little bit of caro syrup. Yeah. And it's like you really needed the chunky bl- brain matter to splatter against that wall to sell yeah, that. Yeah, that's what Kruger would have done. Yeah, <laughs> right? Or they Blood Rage. You remember Blood hat. Rage where the guy had the, his head was yeah. split and he hit the, <laughs> and his brain fell out? <laughs> uh, uh, dear reader, you can't see, but Holly's. Holly's uh, like, no, 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 no. To not get Blood Rage. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, man. Um, you got to Colin. You got to your mouth. <laughs> so, um,. So who does he who does he go after next? I mean, basically, he's leaving Gretchen the uh, the offerings, right? Mm-hmm. Because what's his ultimate plan here? Uh, uh, just to thank her for being his friend. Is that what it was? Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> 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 well, he's mute the whole way through in the movie, but he does say something at the end. Uh, he mutters one word to her, which I didn't catch. It was a single syllable word. What was it? Anybody other than Sean? Love. I had no idea. He, said, he says love. Does he? Yeah, he goes love. <laughs> oh, so he loves Gretchen. He loves love. Gretchen. And he thinks <laughs> he thinks that he's going to win her heart. By delivering her all the body Love. parts of the people who pushed him down the well. There well, you go. All right. That's, well, that's, now it makes all complete sense. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I understand that. I mean, hell, we'd all do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Uh. okay. So um, in the meantime, the doctor or the professor or whoever he is, is yeah. also maybe trying to track down john ridley the sheriff is also on the case he shows up at Gre- oh sorry that's yeah, right john radley uh radley the right. sheriff the shows up i want is colin mispronouncing easily pronounceable names <laughs> in every episode the yeah. so the sheriff is in this movie a lot the sheriff keeps yes. coming over to the house because he's there's- good yeah what i i afford the role that okay he is, you're I- saying the actor yeah, the actor. Okay, 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 not the character. I like the, what the I like the what the actor is doing. 
Yeah, because when he comes to gathering evidence and all that shit, he's a shit cop. <laughs> oh, you got this uh, finger on your doorstep. Somebody's playing a prank on you. Hey, we should probably find out, like, what? Give me some of that pizza. That doesn't look like sausage. That's not sausage. Let's take it to the crime lab. Hey, you got a human ear on your doorstep. Let's take it to the crime lab. Like, what you the fuck? You got a nose Every in your night. morning newspaper? <laughs> that looks like a bloody nose. He did. He's like, what was the bloody nose joke? He's like, wow, this bloody nose is out of control. Or, yeah. a bloody nose joke. She's got blood all over her uh, kitchen floor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, her boyfriend, uh, David, I think at some point, right after the two guys are like, we got to take off here and go, uh, go varmint hunting in the morning. David goes home and meets with his mom and dad who are still up at whatever, two o'clock in the morning, watching cartoons as you do laughing like hyenas. Those, those is there- parents are high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee they woke up. They're like, want to just like, let's get high and go watch cartoons and eat something in the kitchen. That Where sounds they, marvelous. It yeah. does. They're talking about how he's like, uh, he's completely smashed, right? Or he's like, yeah, totally- I like they're just giving him shit. They're just like, stop drinking so much. God damn it. Yeah. They're pretty good. Did you think that this scene was a ripoff of, uh, I, I totally saw a nightmare on Elm street here. This was, uh, the Johnny Depp scenario. Uh, yes. He gets in they're, a they're very low budget version of it. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing in this scene that I cannot abide by is the dude goes to bed in jeans. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's illegal. I think it's illegal. I think this is what made it illegal in Oklahoma specifically. Yeah. No, actually, nothing good is going to come of that. No, chafing. That's it. Well, I remember he's having some kind of uh, intestinal distress because he ate whatever that quote unquote sausage was. The questionable all the sausage. Reason, all the reason to take your jeans off. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Are those his like shitting pants? You know? Like, <laughs> it's like if I shit myself, I want to contain it. It's like he's heard that phrase like, oh, you should have worn your brown pants today. He just took it completely the wrong way. <laughs> right? Oh. Yeah, shitting pants. So he uh but the killer has already gotten to his house and is hiding underneath his bed. No, this is that was a different guy. That was the guy with the shotgun. Or what happened to this yeah, guy? The shotgun comes up like a like a shark spit. <laughs> yeah. That was great. <laughs> Loved it. Okay, so these are two Loved different guys, right? Okay, are so they? yeah, they're, yeah, because uh, okay. David goes out the uh, window. He gets hung. He looks out the window, and the killer's above him, and like puts down a wire and <laughs> lassos right, him and pulls him out. Yeah, David whose name is Toby something. I can't remember, but I recognized him and I had to look him up. He played, he's the only person in this movie you will have seen in something else. He was young Freddy in uh, Freddy's dead. The final nightmare. Interesting. Yeah. You remember in the flashback? Or, yeah. Yeah. With the knife. Yeah. Uh, or with the raise the straight razor. Um, so he gets hung out the window in front of his his parents are hooting it up at the, some right. cartoon that they're watching on TV and they don't see their their son's body dangling out the window. Uh, the other guy, yeah, okay. So uh, what was going on with him? Varmint wrangler, varmint shooter, <laughs> right? Varmint hunter. I mean, he's the one who goes to bed in his jeans. My bad. Um, so I mean, he's got uh, he's checking his gun. Uh, before he goes to bed, he sets it by the side of his bed and then he goes to sleep and turn the light off. And then we get a, a, a side shot from the bed and all of a sudden you just see the gun making its way across camera like it's just walking by itself, which is pretty great. I laughed. <laughs> I laughed pretty hard at that one. That was pretty funny. Uh, and then uh, what wakes him up? Does he just. Oh, well, he gets pulled under. Uh, he gets yeah, pulled I- under and dragged under the bed. And then we hear possibly yeah. gunshots. I don't know. And then he blood. Gets shot. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay. And yeah. then we wait on a shot of the bed for five minutes and then blood starts leaking out from underneath it. Yeah. Because there is a homemade sense to this movie, right? This is like, even though, uh, Christopher, what's his name had worked in, in Hollywood, right? He's like, I can go home back to Oklahoma and I can make a movie. Right. I've done it now. I, you know, I can I can do this stuff stuff. And so it kind of has a homemade quality where he is trying to replicate, you know, the Halloween. You know, doing this thing with like his friends or, you know, some uh, regional oh, yeah. actors or whatever. We're going to make a yeah, horror this movie. Is, 
I can't help but picture that it's just Dawson from Dawson's Creek making this movie. Michaela? Yes. Right? I, it feels so amateur level. This feels like a, like a, I wouldn't even say college, like high school film project. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it kind of feels like, um, like this is a Travis leg movie. And I say that with all the love in the world because I've worked on my fair share of them. But this feels like a low budget, this feels like a low budget Rockford movie is what it feels like. <laughs> is that a little sure. plug for Raymond did it? The other, the Rockford There you go, which movie. is like, they're sharing some shit right there. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's some, uh, uh, did he see this movie is the question. I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, but the, uh, how do we rate the, uh, the special gore effects makeup in this movie? Mm. I mean, there's not a lot of it. No, mm. there's just no. some. <laughs> yeah, there's like two dudes that get beat to death with a flashlight. So, like, that's those are pretty big. Um, ah, it's not enough to grade it. Yeah, I was kind of. I'm in the same boat where it, it's all either off screen or in shadow. It's like they didn't dark. have they didn't have their Tom Savini or their Ed French yeah. or somebody to, to oh. pull that off. Oh. A lot of this movie was really dark. There was a lot that I couldn't see, that I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, when we got towards the end, it got real dark. Mm-hmm. And it's a very like, chaste, we were near it's a well. a chaste movie, too, for a, a 80 slasher movie. Uh, I mean, again, I don't know if it's uh, just the, the... It's like the PG uh, slasher movie, where they're kind of like, you know, let's go out in the car and do it. Like, no, we got to go varmint hunt. I can't give that up. The varmint hunting. I'm sorry that the fact that those guys uh, were like, no, we don't want to. No sex with our girls. We want to go and because uh, we got to sleep tonight. Well, uh, tomorrow we got to hunt the, those uh, varmints. I think that was their alternate plan. It's just like we know I'm not getting sex tonight, so we're just both going to leave to go varmint hunting and leave the, the girl in her house all alone, even though there's been I mean, a, somebody leaving body parts uh, outside of her uh, on her porch every night. Okay, whatever. I feel like it's a pretty dedicated wingman to be like, hey, if I'm not getting laid, you're not getting laid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, ju- just one of them is not going to get laid. So they both just like, we're just going to go hunting. Like, true that's, friendship. That's like a <laughs> true wingman. True friendship right there. Yeah. Well, that leaves Gretchen alone with Samantha. I don't know what her name is, but her, her best gal pal. Casey. Casey. And uh, so they have to endure the night when the lights go out and there's somebody out there trying to kill them. They're calling the cops and like, somebody's trying to kill us. And then the phone goes dead. But in Oklahoma, apparently when the phone goes dead, you still get a, the beep, 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 beep dial tone. It's, it's fantastic. Well, I mean, um, everything goes out and then she gets a call from the phone upstairs because that one's still working. Second I'm, line. I'm throwing my hands up and uh, I don't know. Maybe our phones connected to the power. Like, I don't understand. I figured they'd all go through the same box. On the it's been house. so long. I've forgotten how phones work. Phones are not connected to the power. <laughs> I don't know how landlines, have their landlines own, work anymore. I have forgotten. They have their own. Do you power. have to plug them in? They need power, right? Yeah, but just the, it comes through the phone cord. Like through the. Yeah, you don't have a plug just, also. It, through the phone cord is enough to see, give See, this is yeah. where I'm stupid. This is how long it's been. I did not remember how this worked. <laughs> yeah. That's why when your power went out, you still had a phone. You know? Okay. Yeah. All right. I need to, rem- I need to remember so this. So you can call the power company and tell movies. them, hey, my power is out. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I was, still I've been confused for decades now. All didn't right. You, good. Didn't you have a phone at work when you were in the office? Yeah, but I didn't like look behind it to be like, is that the only connection? Like, well, I don't. Yeah, but they've switched all those over now. Now they are all like powered, you know, internet. Have phones. we gotten off track? Okay. So, <laughs> so the climax of this movie Casey ends up dead. Her head, she's beheaded. And we finally at least find our killer. What does John Bradley look like? Because this is important because he's wearing a mask. No? No. No, he's not. He's horribly disfigured then. Yeah. It does kind of look like he's wearing a mask, but he's just horribly disfigured. Yeah, we talked about this. He looks like a Batman villain because he looks like he's been dropped in a vat of acid. Yeah, and, he, and, his, and he's got like overly long hair. Or hair. It's a weird look. And he affects the uh, the walk. Uh, the, he's Michael Myers. I mean, through and through. He gets shot and sits up like Michael Myers. He stands in the background of a frame like Michael Myers. The music is telling you he's Michael Myers. He gets shot six times and then sits back up. 
Gretchen goes out, of course, to the cop who's been stationed outside of her house. He's dead. She goes to her neighbor. She's dead, murdered on the couch. Uh, so he's killed everyone in the neighborhood <laughs> on his way to, like, isolating her, right? Because that's what these psychos yeah. do. They kill everyone around you. So you have nowhere to run. It's just you and you and him until the final confrontation. So, yeah, she blows him away with the cop's gun. That's right. Right, mm-hmm. suits him a bunch six times. He sits up, Michael Myers style. He's still pursuing after her. the music's going dum, dum, dum. <laughs> does she dum, does dum, she dum. shoot her friend's head out of his hand? Maybe he loses that thing at one point. I it made it look like she shot it out of his hand, which is which is sick. <laughs> I'm wondering how good but that funny. effect was because they sh- they just backlit it. You know, they didn't have like a good like you never get a good look at the head. Like I don't remember ever seeing her face. It was just all backlit. Yeah. Uh, he's holding a human head. Yeah. Um, and then she meets up with I think it well he kills he does uh he does meet and kill the uh professor slash doctor. Right, right. What did he at do at the to well? Him? He went to the well and he beat him to death with a flashlight. Oh, well, that's Literally. right, right, right. Because right. he also then went the, to a. a the sem- guy had like five minutes to get away. He, he lifted his hand to beat him up, and the guy was like, "No!" <laughs> and then he and then he just got beat to death. How do you get beat to death with a flashlight and not get away? Come on. I don't know. Come on. I don't know. It hasn't happened to me. Well, I can't good. tell you. I'm glad. There's also I'm glad. Uh, a Halloweenish scene where they visit the cemetery, and uh, there's an extremely odd grave digger there who's trying to. What the fuck was up with that guy? I don't know. It's just is this movie a spoof? Is no, this movie I, supposed no, to be a comedy? They were funny. They thought they were funny. Yeah, but I don't think the movie is like a spoof movie. No, I think. No, I think they had no. moments of humor, but that's it. I don't know, because all this stuff, that, and now that I'm recalling, like, it wasn't funny when I watched it. It was just like, what the fuck? And now it's like they were trying to be funny the whole way through this movie, weren't they? It's all not of this over stuff, the top enough to be funny. That grave digger is over the top. The guy trying to kill somebody element. with the yeah, chainsaw not, that doesn't no start, is. and then the power drill doesn't work, and he's got to hit the power drill to keep that's like, oh, that's over the top, isn't it? No. I don't know. When you say spoof, I think like scary movie, and this is nowhere near that level of like. I think they're trying to be humorous, but they're not, you know, yeah. trying to go crazy. But it's not a yeah. horror movie if you're diffusing all of your horror with uh, these broad. Uh, Have you not watched games. a horror movie? Come on, this this they this don't do anything like this. Well, you don't oh. make, you don't make your killer funny. Where your killer is incompetent was, and can't, like, you know, pull off a kill. I mean, that that doesn't help, yes. Yeah. I literally think this was just an attempt to cash in on, like, the notoriety of the Halloween movies and just the sh- slasher genre in general. I don't really think they cared about what type of movie they made. It was just an attempt to, like, jump on the bandwagon. What if I told you that in my research, I found someone who was on the crew, Ooh. a guy named Gentle Dissident who rated this movie two out of 10 on IMDb. He said he worked special effects and was mic placement. He was also the tall guy in the movie. He says, this film was just an excuse to party. There was nothing serious about it. It was meant to be a bad spoof. And yes, Halloween similarities were discussed. There were a ton of people working on this thing just to have fun. Several crew members are in the classroom scene. Uh, he says after it went to video, he made a small check. He, the director plays the doctor in the asylum. He says, um, let's see, he's talking about all the, uh, special effects. Oh, the sparks on the fence. We didn't talk about that. Uh, oh, yeah. when our killer is trying to escape, there's an electrified fence. When he touches it, you see his hands like sparking. That's from a squib box built by gentle div- dissident. He says, uh, the exploding head shadow, was a watermelon with a hose. A push rod gave it some extra splatter. Uh, my friend and I drove around all night looking for dead ducks. As the night went on, we, everything looked like a dead duck. When the sun came up, we yeah, went to Yeah, when you get a, that high, of course Yeah, it does. we went to a farm. We got some chickens. And luckily, there was a dead duck at the pond for the shoot. Uh, he also says that I can't remember Thank what was God. on the pizza. It was something strange from the meat department. He fried it up and he also made the dog food that got sampled. And oh, playing on that crew was one of the best times in his life. The dog food that got sampled is a scene that you'll remember forever. If you see this movie where Gretchen is trying to feed her dog, uh, and it's uh, wet dog food. 
and she has on a spoon when the door rings and so she goes to the door and Casey's there and Casey does whatever all guests probably should do. If you answer the door with something on a spoon, you're obligated to bend down and lick it off. Which she does, and then is horrified to deter and discover that it's dog it's food. I do this about as many times as I find random blood spots all over the place. Well, I'm getting so, worried about you, Sean, because I, I believe know, the random it blood spots. Over there. <laughs> it's been like six months and I've been alone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing but cats. <laughs> You what? You try to live in six months with cats and be like, mm, I wonder if this cat food, I wonder what it really tastes like. You see if that doesn't happen to you, Colin. I, I'm, I'm done now. All right. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, would it be, would you be shocked to learn that our killer is blasted away by the sheriff? He's the hero of the movie who shotguns the killer and knocks him down dead. Then credits roll. And I was surprised that there was not the setup for a sequel, Offerings 2. Electric Boom. Had to say it. Um, how do you think they got that last shot? Because it's it's a pullback, but it's a high pullback. And the only way I've ever seen that done is with a crane. And these people did not have a crane. Maybe they did. I don't know. The lighting, I thought, in some of these I mean, scenes. You, I mean, Colin, you had a crane for a, a short film, so it is possible. That's true. Uh, well, the jib. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you get a jib. It's kind of like a uh, poor man's crane. Um, sure. And I'm sure that existed at some TV station around there in Oklahoma at some point. But some of the lighting, I was actually sitting there going like, oh, this is not bad. When the cop was in the car and he's lit with the blue light in the front, and he's got the orange light in the back and he's right. got the white light in the front. But he was able to find his light, you know, sit forward enough that you're you know, I'm like, eh, okay, they, you know, it's like, yeah, there's some kind of technical competence going some on here. It's not, not bad. And, um, I've seen some footage from the Blu-ray and it is far lighter in the Blu-ray, Blu-ray. You can see a lot more. Mm. Thank God. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see that tonight. <laughs> not on the midnight. No, we had Pulp tracking, app. we had tracking on our movie tonight. Yeah. That yeah. was amazing. Haven't seen that in a while. Right. So now we got to remember this probably was not a widescreen a, a 185 to one on the VHS, which I think we watched. This is the zoomed in, right? Yeah. <laughs> they zoomed in on a VHS. Yeah, they did. Oh <laughs> boy. So some of you lucky fuckers are out there watching this on Kino Lorber home video. And this is your favorite movie that you've ever seen. And uh, you, you had a very different experience and you didn't have ads though. It would be funny. If that Blu-ray came with ads in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> what if we bought that thing? We're like, God damn it. Fucking yeah. Tom Every Zane's couple minutes. Anytime fitness. Yeah. Humera. Um, all right. Well, uh, I suppose. Is that it? I think it's it. You want to hear if we would recommend offerings to you as part of the pantheon of great 80 slasher movies you're gonna have to bear with us for just one more minute first of all we're gonna answer some of your mail and to do that we're gonna have to summon our mailman and his name is igor bring us the mail masters masters the mail i've got the mail so many letters our followers are rising rising why thank you igor thanks igor I got nothing. No, nope. no, nope. he's <laughs> he's wearing a T-shirt. That's all I got. <laughs> all very tired today. <laughs> well, speaking of T-shirts, Michael Whitaker writes in and says you should sell T-shirts with a picture of Igor wearing the various outfits from each movie you do. That's a lot of a lot of shirts. A lot of That's shirts. A lot of shirts. Yeah. We could the most we could probably do is make an Igor sticker, which would be bad. <laughs> yeah, but we can do it. We can do an an Igor design. Yeah, but sure. we have to get the image of Igor down on some sort of that's paper right. or digital, and I don't think that's allowed. Like the prophets in the Quran, you just you're not allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah, right. Because so. some people think he's a butler, a big, tall, lurch-looking guy. Some right. people think he's a little I, dude. I barely know what he looks like. Yeah. So. I think there will. I think there will be an Igor design, but he will not be personified. No. Maybe like a hand or something at the most, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't ever like want to see Igor. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, we don't need to like, yeah, personify him, but something. Well, G Money also recommend. He says, "Might I recommend some freak show sexy netting be added to the freak show <laughs> swag shop 
wear some sexy netting masks. Oh, uh, a sexy netting mask would be great. I, I will sexy put up. Netting. I will put up the actual sexy netting for sale if someone wants to buy <laughs> the actual <laughs> sexy netting that Holly gave me. I still have it. It You're has not gone up over a bed. I gave you? We There's should do an eBay it. auction for it. There's tons of it. I can sell pieces. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look for that coming shortly. I mean, uh, used or unused, <laughs> up to you. Whatever you want to pay. We won't talk we details can, about it. We, Sean, we can make that a Patreon reward. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, you should, you the, the at the sexy eight dollar level. Yeah, right. the sexy netting level. Well, well Michaela, why don't you uh, sexy netting? I'm taping an intro for that. It's like, so you've chosen the sexy netting option. <laughs> when we go to cameo, this is all going to our heads. Michaela, why don't you remind oh, uh, folks at home uh, where they can get a hold of not our sexy netting, but our sexy swag? Public.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, you can also email us and join the Freak Show family or email us. You can get a hold of us, follow along, talk to us. We'll read your stuff on the air. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can also follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie offerings david m dawson he's very excited that we're doing offerings he said hell yes that's that's the friend who wanted me to pick this <laughs> oh that makes sense. all right so, david that's why he's very excited about it so this one's right. for you like, this movie has a fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the fan. other guy the, the other guy who has not seen it well robin though, um, though he though he did Order the Blu-ray movie sight unseen. So he can watch it for this tonight. Well, I like uh, the fact that some of uh, you out there are following along and uh, yes, and re- going to great lengths, apparently, to uh, rent some of the movies uh, that we <laughs> mentioned on the show. But Robin Linneman Silverberg actually has seen this movie and says, uh, I remember this one. It's the dollar store version of Halloween. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you are correct. I like yeah. that description. Uh, Simon <laughs> Carter Also says, I remember, oh no, he says, I remember seeing this VHS cover and it always intrigued me, but I've never seen the movie. I will look forward to your verdict. Oh, well, you're going to have a little bit more of anticipation. Nick Siebel says, offerings. That soundtrack sounds very familiar. Is that the legendary horror movie composer, John Craftsperson? (laughs) 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 our listeners are funny (laughs) they i mean they are they are kind of funny well mf mad he says it sounded like the composer was very influenced by nightmare on elm street and halloween for this score especially the last 15 knock off michael myers minutes Uh, and cj lewis says this is definitely an obscure one by the looks of it is it supposed to be an amalgamation of leatherface and michael myers and we posted a picture of the killer so yeah john Bradley. Bradley. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Ghost. Uh, we asked you uh, if you preferred Demi Moore with the long hair or the short hair, and uh, more of you said short hair by one vote than long hair. Uh, oh, I liked the no hair vote that came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Andrew Bradford, he said he preferred to look from One Crazy Summer, but Andrew, that is long hair. That's just that age yeah. hair. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Dooley says if... Like um dread type thing, so... Oh, we had we had a thing going on 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 Facebook, which is why you should join us over there. Um, Ryan, did, we posted a picture from Ghost of Patrick Swayze uh, trying to <laughs> move a shoe, and uh, Ryan Dooley said, "If you don't have context, this looks like a buddy cop movie where Patrick Swayze is lecturing his new rookie partner, who happens to be a tennis shoe. I can see the poster now. They make quite a pair." Bill Hainer this said, whole- <laughs> this cop went from the canine unit to the size nine unit. Now he's got some soul searching to do the movie that's laced with adventure. And Grant Parrish added officer Reebok. If anyone gives you lip, shoe him. And this kept going on for a while. I'm not going to spoil it all here. You're going to have to go to no, Facebook. Go to Facebook and check out that conversation. <laughs> this is what we're here for. This is what we hope to inspire in our family. This was <laughs> one of my top moments of the year was yeah. this thread. Yeah. It's pretty good. This is what drives us. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, Carson Snar says, fun fact about Ghost, my family acquired their VHS copy of Ghost from a McDonald's. I think the logo was even on the slipcover. Different times. Yeah, Different I have. times. I, so my family had the VHS for the Back to the Future and Wayne's World from McDonald's. And at my last job, I worked with a lot of people that were like in their very early 20s. And I was telling them about that. And they were like, are you sure? I don't remember that. Well, it's like, well, yeah, because you were not a conscious person. So I sent I found the commercial where they were like promoting it. And it was like Adam's Family Values was another one. And I was like, yes, see, it was a real thing. (laughs) Yeah, look out. about that. Our lives used to be so much cooler. Well, it's, I was <laughs> actually used to be way cooler. I was yeah. talking to somebody about this today. It's like movies back then seemed like a bigger deal because to me, I, you couldn't go anywhere where you didn't like you went to McDonald's and they had the cup, the designer collector cup that you had to collect all five or, you know, I and then you, all that stuff. You, it was on cereal boxes and there were standees whenever you went to the, you know, and now I, it doesn't seem like a movie is everywhere when it comes out. Maybe it is. I saw some of the Wonder Woman 19. 19- 1984 stuff that got released you know when the movie was supposed to come out uh yeah. in the grocery store so maybe they're making a shot at that but you haven't landed until you've landed on a mcdonald's or burger king or in the case of blown away you remember blown away the jeff bridges movie where he was a yeah. bomber that was yeah. at subway Subway what? had the exclusive license. Sub blown away. <laughs> to or blown that, away. See, I see what you're trying to do. Sub there. blown away. Uh, uh, Michaela's done. Michaela can't get me better. Um, <laughs> He's done for the night. Sub blown away. Back then, if These you were a big movie, sub blow you away. You had to have your fast food tie in. Uh, Tony That's Genoa amazing. says uh, about Ghost. His uh, ex wife. Sorry, Colin, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Burger King did have a tie-in with uh, the Green Hornet Seth Rogen movie, and I feel like that's the last time that happened. Yeah, well, now they now all again. they do I is like it. the kids movie. They still do kids movies. You can still go and find like the Incredibles. Yeah, but that was like and- a they had like a meal and like merch and stuff for that movie. Did they was that when they had the green hamburger? Yeah. Ugh. But I feel like that movie was so bad that killed that whole cross promotion thing altogether. <laughs> Probably. Now you just now you just put out a character in Fortnite. That's how you do your. Oh, it's a, oh boy. I know we live in desperate times. Uh, Tony Genoway says my ex-wife was Richard Benjamin's personal assistant when he directed Made in America. This is the movie that we were talking about that uh, Ted Danson and Whoopi Goldberg were in where they first fell in love. Uh, He says it was filmed in the Bay area and he grew up in LA just a couple, uh, or he flew in from LA a couple times to visit. Uh, That was when they first fell in love and they were uh, quite passionate. He says, uh, Whoopi Goldberg held a special screening of Serafina for the cast and crew. We chatted with her for a bit, mainly about how cool Costco was for shopping and sampling. That is awesome. I mean, if you're going to, you're going to, if you're going to have a conversation, I can bond with lots of people over Costco. Yeah. I get that. The, the sampling, unfortunately, is on hold and may never return. <laughs> Um, Novato Judoka says, oddly enough, this was a childhood staple movie for me. And to this day, I hope Swayze is with a pretty lady on a pottery wheel. Uh, may he rest in peace. So rip and throat. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> We had a lot of uh, write-ins this week because this is uh, we're recording this after our 400th episode is aired, so uh, that's just a sampling. But thank you all very much again. We do read everything that comes in, so and yes, your suggestions, you. and so thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to go around the room and we're going to tell you if you should watch offerings tonight's movie. We're going to start with Michaela. Michaela gets to go first tonight. What did you think of tonight's movie, Offerings? Uh, is it is it blood rage or intruder? It is not. <laughs> it is much more on the shocking dark spe- spectrum of things. I was definitely having a lot of the same feelings uh, when I was watching this as shocking dark. Like, what's the point of this? Why wouldn't I just watch the original? This isn't even awesomely bad enough to make it fun. Um, it yeah, it just it had, there's no redeeming qualities to this as far as I can see. I was really hoping it'd be a hidden gem, but it's not. You're, you're not going to gain anything by watching this. It's And it's so hard to find that the effort you'd have to put into watching it is really not worth what little enjoyment you might get out of it. So hard pass. Hard pass on this dollar store Halloween movie. That is a great way to describe it. Mm-hmm. Colin, what did you think? 
You know, to be honest with you, the method by which we watch this movie on the Midnight Pulp app, which Did I'm hoping you? that no one will go. Well, I mean, the fact that like every 10 minutes I was interrupted by four commercials for the aforementioned Humera uh, retro. What was it? Retro crush anime that I had to watch mm-hmm. uh, anytime fitness, et cetera. Um, it, like I lost the thread of this movie. I mean, it totally broke up, you know, so I actually am considering that I can't give this a legitimate review. I couldn't pay attention to it. My, my attention kept on getting broken up, you know? Uh, but, I, but at the same time, I'm like, there was nothing that I saw that would make me want to go back and revisit it because it was kind of like, um, not so much a class project, but, um, it was somebody who liked Halloween who uh, went and made Halloween, you know, uh, as close as they could probably over the line of, uh, you know, like you probably could, you know, file a lawsuit, uh, against this movie. It's so close in, in so much of its style, it's music for sure. Um, I mean, like I said, you know, I have always disagreed with the critics who've always called all these horror movies ripoffs of Halloween. I'm like, well, they're all inspired by this is a ripoff of Halloween. Uh, It doesn't add anything. It's just like, it's a guy making Halloween, you know, and he's not John Carpenter. So uh, yeah, I guess I'd give this another hard pass. Um, It's a, the, it's a really cheap, cheap, cheap dollar store version of Halloween as uh as uh robin silverberg said so yeah holly what'd you think of uh offerings uh well i did not have commercials during my viewing um i did however have a buffering circle in the middle of my screen for the entire movie so that was fun um but i can say that I did not have that distraction and I still could not follow a goddamn thing in this whole fucking movie. And I, I hate, I don't like shopping at the dollar store. So fuck this movie straight to hell. It sucked ass. I'm uh, Michaela said it. It was shocking. Dark part two. I, I have, I have rage below the surface right now that I can't express. <laughs> Are you having a rage migraine right now? I am. I am. I'm having a rage migraine. Um, so fuck this movie. Never, ever again. No one should ever watch it. No. Hard pass. Sean. Um, offerings. Uh, when it's not being a Halloween ripoff, it is a pretty boilerplate slasher movie. Um, uh, and that's unfortunate because uh, like we talked about, so we, sometimes we got to go diving to see if we can find some gems somewhere. Um, and sometimes we just, you know, we find, uh, uh, turds that look kind of gold. I appreciate um, you finding this, a movie I hadn't seen before. So there kudos you go. And to see, you. <laughs> thank you. And that's, that's a tough thing to do on this show is to find something that Colin hasn't seen, or at least a slasher movie Colin hasn't seen. So I'm proud of that fact. I am not proud about anything else as far as it is con- concerned with this movie. Um, it's pretty, uh, I mean, there's some, I, I laughed at some moments, obviously there, there's some funny shit in here. Um, the bend over thing, uh, laughed real loud at that when the cop was like, bend over, hey kid, and the kid's running away. I thought that was hysterical. You can um, get that I same haven't... quality of humor on The Simpsons, Sean. I know, yeah, I, know. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Only because I have not heard that joke in years. So it hit me, I'm just like, oh shit, the, that type of humor used to exist and a lot of people thought it was really funny um so i did laugh at it um other than that no it's uh yeah i mean you try and not not let the way you watch something kind of um infiltrate your thoughts on a movie but like holly said i'm pretty sure we could have watched this straight through without any interruption and it just would have been not uh i mean there's nothing that stands out about it it's pretty quiet it's pretty dark sometimes it's pretty uneventful maybe if they had gone like full gore with it but again it's a low budget movie shot in oklahoma uh ripping off a movie that is you know over 10 years old at this point i mean they they missed the mark i don't know maybe if they'd done this like eight years earlier something could have come out of it it could have been better i don't know they they nah, they just didn't do it it is a very low budget cheap movie and there's nothing in there that's going to get you to like Nothing to get me to go back to it, even even if that Blu-ray had a commentary on it. Mm, I don't know. Um, but uh, I tried and I failed. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think we're all going to have to pass on offerings. Sorry, David. Um, uh, it's uh, it's uh, a universal no. 
at the he Saturday did, Night Freak Show. He did show. warn you, though. He did warn you. It's true. Um, but you know what? You got you to go, you gotta go panhandling. Maybe you find those nuggets. We did not find it here tonight, so no on offerings. It's a nugget, all right. A nugget of shit. There you go. I did. I like. I forgot. I liked the lead girl. Like she was okay. Like you know, she yeah. probably could have done something, but sure. And I like the cop, the actor who played the cop. Yeah. That was all right. Um. So next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Say something, goddamn it! Don't keep me hanging. <laughs> Holly, what are we going to watch next week? Uh, next week we're going to be watching something that you've definitely seen, and. I, it's not exactly a freak show revisit, technically, but it kind of is. Oh, no. We're going to watch The Village. Ah. The M. Night Shyamalan, The Village. Yeah. All right. Well, it's coming. There's going to be it? a lot of yelling. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a really good discussion with this movie. Yeah. Was that the movie that we did that the episode got eaten? No, that yeah. was fine. Yeah, we no. did signs that got lost. Oh, it was signs. It was signs. Oh, That's right. I was we did signs and it got lost. I mean, we we covered his whole uh, ouvre. I knew but, it was a Shyamalan uh, movie that you covered. But yeah, it was signs. So either. we have not done the village. Yeah. We're doing yeah. the village. All right. Yay. The village. Two channel on in one year, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us for The Village. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>